That was the 1920s. In 1929 came the crash. In 1933, the Senate formed a committee to investigate Wall Street. Uh, out of that came the Fletcher-Rayburn Bill, which was 50 pages of detailed anti-manipulation statute, gave the uh, Federal Trade Commission extensive powers. It was roundly rejected by Wall Street. The president of the New York Stock Exchange, Richard Whitney, famously said to the committee, you gentlemen are making a great mistake. The exchange is a perfect institution. Now, if you've seen the movie Trading Places, you know Dick Whitney. He was an archetype of a certain class on Wall Street, blue blood, aristocrat, prep school, confidant of J.B. Morgan, a gentleman, which meant in those days, incidentally, neither Jewish nor Catholic. In his view, gentlemen didn't have to be regulated. They have a gentlemanly way of doing things. Their reputations regulate them. And here these rubes from Washington show up and want to regulate them. That's Roosevelt socialism. So Whitney fought a massive PR campaign back before there were massive PR campaigns. Roosevelt, who fought a lot of political battles to change America, said that a, uh, of Whitney that a more definite and highly organized drive is being made against the effective legislation for Wall Street than against any similar recommendation made by me. Will Rogers observed, those old Wall Street boys are putting up an awful fight to keep the government from putting a cop on the corner. And the final bill, the Securities Exchange Act of 34, was a flimsy compromise. So flimsy, in fact, that the chief investigator of the committee said that the law as it stands forbids and requires so little that we may truthfully say there is no body of laws as yet governing the securities market after the passage of the Act of 34. The Act created the SEC on July 1st, 1934. It gave them power to bring civil suits, but no criminal power. Any crimes had to be referred to the DOJ. The heart of the system is the concept of a self-regulatory organization, an SRO, which works like this. An exchange sets up its regulatory body, which publishes its own regulation. It oversees itself, in a sense. The SEC approves the SRO rules, makes sure they police themselves to their rules, and knits their, them together in a national framework of rules. The New York Stock Exchange is an SRO, as is NASDAQ, whose regulatory body is the NASD. Scattered throughout the literature of the time is a phrase, restore public confidence. They took as their point the restoration of public confidence. A cynic could say they didn't seem to do as much to justify public confidence as much as they worried about restoring it. It was a PR effort. That view is uncharitable. They did do something, but it always struck me as odd uh, because it makes the SEC uh, see anything that erodes public confidence as pernicious. The 1934 Act has a rule, 17A, which reads, the United States Congress finds that the prompt and accurate clearance and settlement of securities is necessary for the protection of investors. So the US Congress says that it is a fundamental mission of the SEC to provide for the prompt and accurate clearance and settlement of securities. I'm not making that up. What became of that paragon of virtue and gentlemanly discipline, Richard Whitney? The New York Times would later report that when he stole from his customers and looted an exchange fund to aid widows and orphans, that was a New York Stock Exchange Fund, and he didn't loot it in order to aid widows and orphans. It was a fund that had been set up to aid widows and orphans, and Whitney looted it. In fact, in 1939, Whitney pled guilty to embezzlement and was given five to ten in Sing Sing. I'm not pointing fingers or gloating. I'm just pointing out... Uh, these facts because the line from this paragon of the Wall Street gentleman was, you know, we're gentlemen, we can be trusted, we don't do the things you think we do, until he quite literally got caught stealing from widows and
Pretty Kafkaesque, right? How do you explain it? Go back to the public choice explanation about sugar, but make a couple substitutions. Say, why have a rule that lets hedge funds sell stock they don't deliver, grandfathers past FTDs, lax penalties for current misdeeds, hides information from the public, and generally pins a kick me sign on the back of the capital market? Substitute the SEC for Congress. The needle deflects to favor some Wall Street banks. Tens or hundreds of billions of dollars have been drained away from retail investors to banks and hedge funds. It's just a problem of dispersed costs and concentrated benefits. Is it hundreds of billions? The residual value of the FTDs at just the DTCC is six billion, and including X clearing, as we saw, it must be five times that, so 30 billion. But who knows what they were before they got shorted? 100 billion, 200 billion? This doesn't include companies that have been bankrupted or simply delisted. Some economists, like Shapiro, believe that hundreds, if not several thousand companies and have been wiped out along with hundreds of billions of dollars, if not perhaps a couple trillion. Is money really shared back to the SEC in the form of bribes? I doubt it, but there are people leaving the SEC in droves. One fellow was head of market regulation and just took a $4 million job at a Wall Street law firm. Three years ago, about four people let per year left the SEC from levels that required a press release. In 2005, 19 people left. Is that because they can get $4 million salaries or because they see a train wreck coming? I don't know. But one explanation for what's going on is that the SEC is a captured regulator and specifically that this is a problem of distributed costs, concentrated benefits, and that this flimsy regulatory regime allows massive FTDs to drain money from the American retail investor, channel it to Wall Street, and that's where the regulators go to work when they leave. I hate to be critical, but how well is the SEC doing its job? Remember the 17A mandate. How have they done with that prompt clearing and settlement of trades mandate? Uh, the scandals of the last few years have resulted in a system where the SEC is asking companies to be far more transparent, and I celebrate that. How is the SEC doing at transparency? How are they doing with restoring public confidence? Are you, are you confident? I'm confident.